Hey everyone, Erin from The Impatient Gardener. What do you think of my new gardening outfit? Very stylish, right? Okay, we are here. It is Boxwood Blight Part 2, The Removal. If you saw my first video on Boxwood Blight, basically I suspected I might have had it. I sent some uh, plant samples off to the University of Wisconsin Plant Diagnostic Lab. Came back positive for, plant, uh, for Boxwood Blight. It's the fifth known case of it in the landscape meaning not at a nursery or something like that and um, I believe and the first one in my county certainly there are more cases than that it's just that I kind of knew what to look for and I thought to send samples in what has happened since then is in addition to educating myself quite a bit about boxwood blight I have been in communication with people from the plant diagnostics lab and the department of agriculture all of whom are taking this very very seriously in wisconsin this is relatively new to wisconsin and so therefore there is a chance of being able to contain this so that's the goal here is responsible removal now they had offered to um to to sort of be here during the removal to make sure it was done right um, Instead, um, we basically just walked through what that process would be. Here's what we've come up with. And it's gonna sound extreme to you, um, especially if you live in a place where there's box of blight is more prevalent. I don't know that they're necessarily going to these extremes, but here there is a chance of stopping it. So that's why we're being extra careful here. Okay, you will notice I am in a Tyvek suit, gloves, I have booties on, I am very hot. We're not gonna talk for long because I wanna get to this. The plan is to go in there, dig out all of the boxwoods. Two are very bad. The other three, one is showing some signs. The other two are actually looking really great. They're actually putting on a lot of new growth. We're not taking any chances here whatsoever. I'm going to bag those in garbage bags. Then I'm going to try to remove every bit of plant material from those boxwoods that I can. And we have a shop vac here, so I'm going to shop vac my garden in order to make sure I get as much of it as I can. Um, as long as I'm in there, I'm going to take the opportunity to weed because I haven't been able to step foot in this garden. Um, do whatever kind of cleanup I need to do in there. And then when I step out of there, I'm going to put on an entirely new suit because this suit, these booties, are contaminated. That goes in a garbage bag. Then we take all of the boxwoods over to our fire pit. Mr. Much More Patient's gonna fire up a fire and we're gonna burn them, which is the best way of disposing of them and making sure everything goes okay. Obviously, we take them all the plastic bags, bag those. Everything's gonna get like bagged forever. It's like like when you have like asbestos removed from a house or something, it's, it's that kind of thing. Um, and then for the next five years, I'm going to have to wear booties anytime I step into this garden. Um, because the, um, the fungus that causes boxwood blight can live on in the soil or anywhere else in there for five years. So I have bought a hundred pack of booties. Let's hope that covers me for the next five years. Um, so I'm just going to do whatever I can and we're just going to get on with it because like I said, it's quite warm in here. All right, that's the plan. Here we go. Here we wake, hear the birds and see the sun. So I'm not gonna shake off any soil or anything like I normally would if I was removing a plant. In fact, I'm trying to take as much soil as I can. Oh, we know what we have, let's hold on tight. Found what we're looking for in life. Okay, you guys. We interrupt this box with my removal to ask, is this the biggest morel anyone's ever seen? Is this a morel mushroom? It sure looks like a morel to me. I know there is a mushroom that looks like a morel, but if that's a morel, the irony of growing morels near boxwood blight, it probably isn't, but holy smokes. I'm going to take a picture of that. Before I sleep, hear the crickets, see the moon. Side by side and through and through. No limit to what we can do. Okay, so this is one of the better looking boxwoods. Um, you can see all this new growth on it, but even on this one, you can see there are spots where um, the blight has taken hold. 
So even though this looks like a pretty healthy boxwood and there's a ton of new growth on it, uh, it's definitely infected. So there's no hope for saving any of these. And to be honest with you, the whole point of this effort is to try to prevent this disease from spreading throughout my whole yard. Um, I was able to dig up most of the plant material, um, the little leaves that might have been left from any, from any of these. Just the two that were really bad are the only two that have some leaves around the edge. So those are the only two that I'm going to just shop back up the few little leaves that are there just to make sure we get all. So now all of the tools that I used in here are going in um, just trying to figure out what to do with my booties. They're going in a bucket of bleach. 10% bleach and water solution for all the tools they are going to soak in there. That's why I used old stuff. Oh, I'm very sweaty. Okay, now I'm going to change into a new suit, throw the other one away. Uh, and then we got to go deal with getting these into the fire. All right, so next steps. Um, first of all, I'm not replacing those boxwoods this year. I just decided, well, first of all, I'm not going to put boxwoods in there probably ever again, but certainly not for the next five years. I did research some boxwood alternatives. I just decided to let it go for this year. If you recall last year, this grass, this is Hecklenchloa macro that grows in there, got so tall that it almost covered up the boxwoods anyway. Sorry, my booties are falling off. It almost covered up the boxwoods anyway, so those are going to fill in. It'll just be grass. Maybe that's good. Maybe I don't need anything going forward. I also left the holes where the boxwoods were for now um, instead of filling them up because I think what I'm going to do is once fall comes um, or even winter, I might go in there and hit that. You know, I've got a weed torch and hit that with a torch and try to burn that soil just in case. We might be able to kill some more spores that are there. I just obviously can't do it right now when plants are growing there. And uh, and then I am going to come through. I'll have to gear up, come through, and um, get, get the weeds along the edge. Unfortunately, this is a bed that needs very little maintenance. So if I can just get that weeded pretty good and edge, um, it should it should that should be it for the year. I shouldn't have to go in there at all. But like I said, from now on. The next five years, booties at least when I go in there. Um, if you recall, we talked about this in the first Boxwood Blight video, but if you recall, the deal with Boxwood Blight is that these spores, these fungal spores are sticky. So they stick to stuff. They stick to, to your clothing and your hair and your shoes and your, your dog and deer and all of those things. And that's how they spread. They're not airborne, so they won't travel through the air, but they will stick to things and then you transfer those that way so okay off to the fire pit to go burn these and then um, after that um, I am going to throw all anything that's been in there away all of these suits are garbage and I'm gonna change my clothes and take a shower because I forgot to cover my hair so it's probably in my hair too so again the whole point of this is well a I don't want to contribute to the spread of this at all but the other point of this is to um, protect the rest of the boxwoods on this property. So I'm going to be super careful, and that's part of the reason why I'm doing this. So if I can just keep everything super clean right now um, and not go in here again, cross our fingers, hopefully we'll be okay. Oh, we know, but we have this hold on tight. Found what we're looking for in life Call us crazy, but things are finally right You and I, the future is bright Well, that's that. Goodbye, Boxwoods. Let's hope we've done enough here um, and continue to do enough to protect the rest of the Boxwoods uh, in the in the yard. Uh, I am gonna just sterilize everything. Lysol, bleach, whatever it takes, anything that's been touched during this, just so that um, if I've been this careful, it'd be bad to screw up at the last minute. All right, you guys, I hope you're having a better day in your garden than I am. We'll see you soon.
Bye.